You're listening to the Batuta Advocates Weekly News Wrap on Desert Rock FM 96.5. G'day, I'm Bruce Hitchcock, and you're listening to the Weekly Batuta News Bulletin, coming to you from Koala Mattress Studios in downtown Batuta. Joining me in the studio today is Wendell Hussey, the cadet from the Batuta Advocate. Hello, Bruce, and hello to those listeners inside and outside the Diamantina Shire. Here are the top stories from the Batuta Advocate, Australia's oldest and most respected newspaper. First up, and in national news, the Great Barrier Reef Foundation have revealed what they're going to be doing with the $444 million grant that they've been given. After receiving the largest ever not-for-profit grant in the history of the nation, the Six Employees Strong Organisation has grand plans to spend nearly half a billion dollars painting all of the dead coral pretty colours again. The Foundation will be developing an underwater paint that can last up to 20 years and ensure the natural wonder of the world stays pristine for future generations. Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull explained that the Foundation, made up of shadow mining directors, will be able to achieve so much more than the 5,500 people working at our country's flagship science body, the CSIRO. And we've heard as well, Bruce, that they could be installing some little plastic fishies in and around the painted coral. Geez, wouldn't that be a nice touch? And Dell, elsewhere around the country, Sam Dastiari's in the news again. Yes, Bruce, the disgraced former Polly has landed himself a big screen role. He features as a Chinese puppet in the new movie, The Happy Time Murders, which is bringing our listeners the podcast this week. The Batuta Advocate can exclusively reveal that the former darling of the ALP has a gig in the Happy Time Murders movie, which will be released on the 23rd of August. Sensationally, Dastiari has been cast as a Chinese puppet. The man who used the halal snack pack craze to take social media by storm has some strong lines around things like Australia not interfering with China in regards to the South China Sea. He said to us this week, I only comment for cash or favour, okay? And with all due respect, I'm not sure your Outback newspaper has either of those. Zhijian, bye-bye. The artist formerly known as Dasher certainly has landed on his feet again, hasn't he? It's a cat-like ability these pollies have, Bruce. No matter how they fall, they always seem to land on their feet. I'll be curious to see what sort of reception he gets when the movie hits the big screen. And there's been some interesting scientific research released this week, mate. Yes, that's right. A study has confirmed that 90% of a bun mee's chili is almost always confined to the final bite. The CSIRO found that the vast majority of the spicy garnish is always concentrated right down the bottom of the roll. We asked a Vietnamese baker close to our office, Annie Vo, and she said that customers who ask for chilli should be prepared for chilli and not to complain when they come across chilli in their barn mee. She said to us, you know you can open your sandwich and look at it if you want, or, and this is a verbatim quote, you cannot have chilli if it's going to blow your dumb fucking first fleet head off. Strong words there, but I guess when you're selling a $5 pork roll, you don't have to worry too much about customer service. Well, it's a product that sells itself. And Bruce, this next story is one that might not resonate so much with an older head like yourself, but we sat down with a local man who told himself that he wouldn't be wasting his upcoming weekend like he has with every other weekend in the last few years. Yeah, mate. Look, it's been a little while since I've been able to piss my weekends away. Kids will straighten you out real quick. You'll learn that one day. Don't have them. Yeah, sage advice. Anyway, this local man named Francis Kennedy told us about how he looked in the mirror and blatantly lied to himself by promising to make the most of his next weekend. He said that instead of living hedonistically, he is going to go camping or bushwalking or fishing or something like that. And in other news around town this week, a local shadow kickboxer down at the park has dared other park goers to fucking look at him. The Krav Maga kickboxing and UFC enthusiast named Clay Wilson sat down with the advocate to explain why you'd have to be pretty fucked in the head to even look his way. Yeah, he said that anyone who made eye contact with him when he was working out was asking for trouble. He told us... Yeah, if I'm flat out going to make the oots oots noises and everything and someone starts fucking staring at me, who knows what I might do? Even I don't know what I'm capable of. And on the sporting front, Brucey, it just keeps getting worse for the Penrith Panthers. Yeah, that's right, Dell. Only eight years into his five-year plan, and in what's being described as the ultimate power play, general manager Gus Gould has sacked himself. The club is unsure as to why Gus boned himself just weeks out from the finals, but they believe the power move has something to do with trying to keep a halfback Nathan Cleary. Bold move by Gus. Gould was seen leaving Panthers Stadium with the frozen oak machine strapped to the roof of his skyline after the former Penrith player, coach and manager revealed that the end of his employment came after many tumultuous years of arguing with himself. He certainly is a polarising figure, and it sounds like he's even polarised himself. 
Well, look, we don't need to criticise him for that. I think we've all tried to polarise ourselves from time to time. We certainly have, Bruce. Anyway, that's the news wrap for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast in order to get your weekly fix of real, unfiltered and unwavering regional news. And don't forget, The Happy Time Murders is out in cinemas from August 23. Until next time, I'm Bruce Hitchcock. And I'm Wendell Hussey.